Okay, so my controller finally arrived. This is a 48 volt, 500 watt, 30 amp brushless controller. That being said, that brings us up to 1,440 watts of power. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing wired up. So what I'm gonna do is hardwire all my wires in place because I do not have connectors for these. Gonna cover it up with heat shrink and that's it. Now let's go ahead and wire up our hall sensor since it's in the same connector as the motor wires. It says it right on the connector hall. So we're gonna go ahead and wire this up, wire this color with color. Let's go ahead and wire up our throttle. This is what I have left to work with from up top is my throttle and my light switch. All right, so let's go ahead and continue working on our throttle. So now I'm left with my headlight wires. Down here is my tail light wires. What I'm gonna do here is connect red with red and black to black. Let's go ahead and do that now. With this step down converter, what I'm gonna do is use the output, which is 12 volts, three amps, and I'm gonna wire this directly to my headlight and tail light. Positive with positive, negative with negative. The input is gonna be wired in to the main power supply. Okay, so I wired something wrong because now when I power on my headlight, when that's off, my tail light is still on. So I have to go back down here and clip one of these wires. So let's go ahead and do that. I did manage to get my headlight and my tail light to work with the button up top. So how I did that was, now I have both of my wires taped off for my headlight. This is so that way I'll know this is for my headlight. And then I had both of these black wires also taped off. They were actually soldered together and they weren't supposed to be. Now, one side is going to one side of the prong to the switch up top and the other side is going to the other side of the switch. Now with these connected together, as you can see what that is doing is completing the circuit. And that's why my, my tail light was not turning off the way it should. So, I only need one. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this other one. It's just in the way. This wire that's going to my button, it's sharing that ground connection with the headlight. So when I power that off, they power off together and they power on together. Now that I got that figured out, let's go ahead and wire this step down converter together. Okay, so the two black strands of wires, one of them I fed it up there because it's unnecessary, you don't need it. And the other one, what I did, as you can see, is I soldered it to my tail light ground wire. So from the button, it's going to my tail light negative, and then the positive is connected to the positive with my headlight. Now we're gonna wire our step down to this positive and this negative. We're not gonna do nothing with this. All we're gonna do is take that off. our output and wire that to our switches. Negative to negative, positive to positive. Finally, let's work on our main power supply. Now we're gonna go ahead and put this back inside of this housing and show you how that goes. 
You just want to get your wires and feed them straight up. And this, you want to connect this right to this screw right here. Now, I, you, I'm using my own screw. What I'm using is a T25 because the original strip and I just couldn't use that again. Now you want to connect this tab to this blue tab. It's important that you connect this. This goes to your charging port. Let's focus on these three wires here. Let's go ahead and get these power tabs set up. Go ahead and start off with these two thick ones. So I forgot a wire in my step down converter. What I'm gonna do is piggyback this positive and negative into this positive and negative. So just like before, I'm gonna scratch into these contact points and just solder them in. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this up. You wanna locate your self-study wires. Now, I already did this, but let me show you something. Now, this came broken. This is what it looks like. And the other one has a piece to it. So I touched these together like so, and I was kind of like bummed out. I'm like, damn, you know what? Maybe my, it's not working, but it does work. All you have to do is just put the connection in there all the way. There you see my wheel is spinning, but it's spinning backwards. So we're gonna take this off, let our back wheel stop and just redo it. Now that my wheel's spinning the right way, let's disconnect this. And that's it. Let's give it throttle. I'm gonna show you guys how to activate third speed without having to go inside the controller and doing the K2 to ground bypass, okay? In other words, ground is this black wire and K2 would be would represent high speed, third speed. Okay, so the scooter's spinning right now and it's at regular speed. What I'm gonna do is shorten out purple with black. And you notice the wheel starts spinning slower. So we know that's low speed. Let's take it out. And now we're gonna bridge this pink and black. You can notice the wheel starts spinning at a faster pace. So this pretty much unlimits your speed. So if you're at 25, it's gonna unlimit that to its max, whatever that may be. Go ahead and disconnect our power tab. And now that I know what my third speed is at, this is pretty much my K2 ground bypass, at least on this controller it is. So instead of going inside the controller, I'm gonna clip these wires and solder them together. Now 
Now let's go ahead and put this to the test. Her speed activated. close your lid you're gonna have a gap and that's just real funky looking like I'm gonna show you guys what I did to fix that just like before I've been using these steel plates now be sure to leave links for this I did have to cut it to this piece for this size to, uh, to fit now these are just some extras that I had laying around from making a dual motor bird 2 and bird 3 using a one fourth drill bit be sure that it can handle steel and it can go through this all right i also drilled this out using that one fourth drill bit so that this can fit just like so okay now you see that much of the gap filled up now from the bottom we're going to add our boat install our front brake. And now finally we're gonna get this plastic shell on using a T25 to get these three screws in place. So the ES model is finally complete. Now there are some minor things which really wasn't a big issue. This T25 screw 
stops here because at this point it starts hitting the controller which is fine because it's still grabbed onto the threads from the inside this charging port cap broke off while i was putting on this cover but i can still put that back on these reflectors i put hot glue behind them because one of them was not staying on now for this i can add hot glue to cover this up or some type of epoxy the lock mechanism more than likely i'll probably end up cutting around this that way this can just lay flat other than that everything is good my lights work front light and back light 